Landfills just a few years ago were forgotten about, covered up and capped, and that was it, they were done. Well now, the cap is being uncovered, and the plastics and the commodities that are in those dumps are being harvested, and on top of that, there are particular companies that are specializing in harvesting the biogas, which is created in a landfill, and turning a turbine and making electricity. This is Going Green for Green. Hello and welcome to Going Green for Green, the show that takes you inside the business of the environment. The plastic bag is full. We throw it into the nearest landfill. It's out of sight and out of mind. What is the state of our humankind? And I don't know what to say. Cause we produce my heart every day. And we call it garbage. Garbage. On us every day. Today on Going Green for Green, we head to the Niagara region, where Walker Industries shows us how they are making heat and electricity from an old landfill. We also find out how biogas is playing a role in your blue bin recycling. Then we're off to Mars to find out about sustainable technologies. This program is brought to you in part by RBC. For all your environmental solutions, Hazmat Management and Solid Waste and Recycling Magazines, the Canadian publications that supply industry and municipal managers with all the environmental information necessary to stay on top of this rapidly evolving industry. Landfills, landfills, landfills. Horrible, horrible, horrible human behavior. Not much we can do about it. They're necessary evils. What are we going to do? We're consumers. We just can't stop it. So but you got to start looking at, at our waste as a resource. And at Walker, uh, they're doing a good job of it. This is incredible. Everything you see here is landfill. We're on a 500 plus acre landfill site. We've had a landfill at our Niagara Falls location since 1982. We do take um, a lot of ICI, industrial, commercial, institutional waste from the city of Toronto here, and we do get organics through that system. We get a lot of paper still, which is unfortunate, but it still shows up in garbage quite a bit. And all of that material will break down in the landfill and, and uh, create uh, landfill gas. I hate landfills. Who doesn't? But you know, you gotta give these people credit. 22 kilometers of piping and a network of fittings that actually go into this ground here, drawing from 80 plus wells, all that gets sucked into this little facility just down over the hill over here. And it creates 4,500 cubic feet per minute of biogas. 3,250 CFM, cubic feet per minute of that gas, is tripped over to Abitibi Bow Water, where it's used in the recycling of the newsprint process. Now they have the flare, that little stack that you see just over here. Some days the earth gets heated up and you know it starts shaking and moving around. The water comes into the ground and they get excess gas. Boom, that flare goes off and it's a protection. It's kind of like a release valve if, if too much gas is created, okay? 4,500 cubic feet per minute of biogas. I could talk to you about gillijoules and all kinds of weird terminology, but I'm gonna simplify it for you. Basically, you're looking at enough, enough gas to power 15,000 homes. In order to try and understand landfill biogas, what its potential uses are, how it's created, I tracked down Camilla Swagger from Agate Laboratories. And as Camilla knows, I'm not a big fan of landfills, but she's going to tell us more about what's going on. Easy there, Michael. Landfills have definitely come a long way. Let's take a look at this. The production of biogas from landfills is dependent on something called anaerobic digestion. This means that microorganisms are used in an oxygen-free environment to digest large organic molecules and eventually produce methane gas and carbon dioxide. Methane is the main constituent of natural gas. 
So in a lot of ways, biogas is very similar to natural gas. Walker and Abitibi Bowater have made a unique partnership to try and reduce their carbon footprint. They have basically harvested biogas from the landfill, piped it across the street where the gas is used in the process of recycling newspaper from your blue bin. We initially talked to Abitibi and there wasn't much interest or were concerned about the whole issue of burning landfill gas. And I think over a period of years we persuaded them that this had been done on many occasions in other jurisdictions, especially in the US and that it was quite safe to burn landfill gas in their boilers. And we signed a contract with them in 2002 and built the pipeline and started piping their gas into their boilers. Where we do about 3.6 million cubic meters a month to the Abitibi plant, and that displaces 40 to 50% of their total energy needs. And that's significant because they're the single largest methane gas user, natural gas, in the region of Niagara right now. So it's a significant displacement of fossil fuel there. And uh, we've done a lot of papers with Abitibi at different conferences and there's been a lot of interest in the whole concept here. We have the, a 20 year contract with the region of Niagara for source separated organics from the region. And we also have a contract here at the city of Toronto for their leaf and yard waste collection. We've had that for the last five years. One of the things I think municipalities make a mistake on is they continue to collect grass Grass is very high in nitrogen, so you need a lot of wood or wood fat fiber in there to offset that nitrogen. Um, that's the recipe situation. I think where municipalities ban grass from organics collection, you get a much better recipe and you reduce the potential for odors. Abitibi Bowater, a Welland staple uh, in the newsprint pulp and paper industry here for the past century. Um, this plant we're about to tour is uh, manufacturing 100% recycled newsprint. Uh, the facility uh, was, just 20 years ago, still pulping and making a mix of recycled newsprint along with, uh, with real pulp from trees and from chipping logs in the yard here. Uh, that has all changed. This is 100% newsprint recycled material. Uh, Abitibi Bowater, currently in Chapter 11, has been quite aggressively trying to change their business practices, update equipment, become more energy efficient, become more cost effective, etc. Thus, one of the relationships with Walker Industries, saving the cost of actually producing the steam to, uh, to in, in, within their process to recycle the newsprint, um, that biogas coming from Walker Industries has saved money, saved them time, uh, and has made the process that much simpler. So it's interesting in that, you know, Abitibi, one of, the, one of the struggles has been developing the recycled industry and newsprint out of recycled materials at one price. And then as Chinese demand has escalated beyond probably anybody's wildest dreams, that price has continued to rise. So it's created challenges here. But I think you'll find that uh, Abitibi is, uh, is really doing quite, a, quite an amazing job. And I think you'll see them as a successful company in the long run. This is going green for green. We're going to be right back taking a tour of the Abitibi Bowwater Welland 100% recycled newsprint facility. This program is brought to you in part by RBC.